Three weeks before the end of World War I, the world's largest painting opened to the public in Paris. Called Pontillon de la Guerre, it was begun in 1914 and depicted France victorious, surrounded by all her allies. But in 1917, with the painting almost complete, the United States entered the war. For the Americans to be included in the painting, the artists have no choice but to paint over an existing scene. In what is to become an apt analogy of their fate, the Chinese Labour Corps are painted out. But who were the Chinese Labour Corps, and why were they in France? At the outbreak of war, China was in chaos. Over 2,000 years of dynastic rule had been overthrown by revolution just three years previously, and a replacement system remained elusive. Despite declaring its neutrality, China was dragged into the war when Britain's ally, Japan, invaded and took German-controlled Shandong province. But in January 1915, China decided it was in her interest to assist the Allies, despite widespread belief in China that Germany would win the war. In doing so, Britain promises China the return of Shandong after the war. The Chinese government offers non-combatant laborers to assist in the war effort. The French signed an agreement with the Chinese government for 50,000 laborers. The British had an open-ended agreement, but final records show that 96,000 Chinese volunteer laborers were recruited and transported to France. It is the transportation of Chinese laborers to the Western Front which directly leads to China declaring war. On February the 17th, 1917, the French ship Athos, carrying 900 Chinese laborers recruited by the French, was torpedoed by a German submarine with a loss of 543 Chinese lives. The Chinese government declares war with Germany on August the 14th, 1917. The Chinese workers were contracted for three years and they had to work 10 hours a day, seven days a week. They would have three days holiday a year. On Chinese New Year, and for the Dragon Boat Festival, and one for the Mid-Autumn Festival. When not working, the laborers were confined to camp. The work undertaken was extremely diverse, from digging trenches to repairing tanks. They unloaded ships and trains, built roads, laid railway tracks. They were kept on after the war to do some of the most dangerous and gruesome work, recovering live ordnance and exhuming the dead burying them in the numerous war cemeteries. The number of Chinese who were killed during the First World War is a subject of debate. Buried or commemorated in Commonwealth war graves are around 2,000. Some Chinese sources put the figure at 20,000. Almost certainly, both are likely to be wrong by some margin. And the truth is, we will never know. As we commemorate the centenary of the First World War, almost forgotten stories are emerging. The story of the Chinese Labour Corps is one such story. The contribution of these men has routinely been overlooked or relegated to a footnote in history. That these men deserve better, and our nation's promise never to forget should apply to them as to any other. Join us in our campaign for a national memorial to these men.